Well, can I see you backstage, Pat? Loose in Heartburn Hotel. Miss Meredith, pop in any evening at all. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what my facilities have to offer, and even more pleasantly surprised at my very competitive charges. Oh, not at all, Miss Meredith, and thank you. Goodbye. Same, and I've just been on the blow to that dent from your office. I want to charge a conference bonus. Miss Meredith, how well, what do you think? Oh, she sounds a very nice person, Simon. Charming, easy to talk to. A tad dikey. <laughs> well, who's complaining? This could be good business for the hotel, Simon. Thank you. Uh, nothing certain, Uncle Harry. She's in charge of conference booking, so we'll want to look at the hotel first. Oh, aye, aye. I can't help feeling optimistic. I feel like celebrating. You don't fancy popping into town, do you? What, that new lap dancing club? <laughs> no, Baker was telling me there's a week-long festival of classic films. On and tonight it's Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Why pay to see the Temple of Doom when we're living the certain place? <laughs> Simon, why do you keep talking to Baker? He's caring the community. The DSS told us to treat him like everybody else, but don't talk to him. A festival of classic films, is it? That explains a lot. Last night during that thunderstorm, Baker was dressed up as Gene Kelly, singing in the sudden rain. I saw him, tap dancing all over the place, twirling his umbrella around, jumping up and down on things. Yeah, exactly, that's why I threw him out in the street. <laughs> so I believe in angels. Oh. I might be going up in the world, Douglas. Oh, aye? You mended the lift at last. <laughs> This hotel could soon be hosting multinational conferences. Is this before Slobodan Milosevic wins the Nobel Peace Prize or after? And where exactly are your conference facilities? What are you going to do, carpet the cellar? Here in the Torval and Dean Lounge. We'll clear out all this rubbish in the furniture. You've got room for a couple of dozen chairs, a white blind on the wall, one of them little pointing sticks. You've got a conference. And I've got ballroom facilities. Oh, aye, and a three swastika restaurant to go with it. <laughs> Harry, who in the right mind's going to book this dump for a conference? Harry, Boris, Monsieur Glazura, come to a viewer. No, you're talking. Simon works for the civil service, he says. They're always looking for places to hold conferences. So, I suggested the Olympic Hotel to Ms Meredith. She's chief coordinator for accommodation and conference bookings. And she said she'd pop in one night and have a look at it. You mean she can see? <laughs> oh, well, Harry. That's the end of that dream. Hey, I'll have you know this place has ambience. Husband, what is this word, ambience? I think it is the Latin for death watch beetle. <laughs> again, Mr. Springer. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me, Mrs. Musket. I'll get the lift fixed tomorrow. Can't have Ms. Meredith coming round here and find out the lift's not working. Oh, no, that might give her completely the wrong impression. <laughs> and there's gin and tonic to celebrate. I'll just go and get the lemon. <laughs> oh, 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 it's a game, man, it's a game. Now, listen to me, Baker. I want you to stop quoting this classical film festival. I can't have you coming in here like a miniature Alison Ford and jumping all over me fire. I've got a very important person arriving soon, and I don't want you spoiling the atmosphere. I thought these were blanks. Give me the gun, son. There's a good lad. Be careful, Uncle Eric. Can blow your brains out from there. Don't worry, Harry. I have to be a bloody good shot to do that. This is my pistol, the one I brought back from the Falcons. Where do you get this? Found it lying around. Where? In that chest of drawers in your room. <laughs> Listen to me, Big. I want you to go upstairs, get into bed, and I'll bring you your pill. Do you want to be careful with that gun? You could hurt someone. <laughs> He's been stealing things from my room. No, he wasn't actually Baker himself. He went and saw that classic film, Top Cappy, and has convinced himself he's an international burglar. Let's keep our fingers crossed they don't show the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Deborah! Anybody wants me? I'm up on the third floor, men in the lift. Oh, God. Good morning, Mrs. Mustafa. Sin! Uh, Abdal! Kabak Kafal Harry! <laughs> no, no, not 
Kapsın şu an desmut pet. Bu yaptığının <gülüyor> ne kadar tehlikeli bir şey olduğunu biliyor musun? Az kalsın kocamı öldürüyordun. Hayır hayır hayır. Bu boş top diyene de rul. Kaynar yağda kavrulasın. Mezarına eşekler sızsın. Ya bu ya boşun rul out arsenal. Ha? <gülüyor> Well, <laughs> lovely talk you pet, must get on. <laughs> it's a game, man, it's a game. Another satisfied guest, are you? That's what you get for trying to help people. Hey, you know what's telling me that recently I've been fighting hypodermic syringes around with dustbins? Well, that to me suggests junkies. Either that or Ben Johnson's back in training. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, the other day, right, I've got to clean the bathroom. Mustafa is sitting on the bog, he's got a, a rope round his arm, he's just about to inject himself with a great big needle. His eyes is all glassy and he's shaking. So, I grab the syringe off him and I give him a slap round the face, you know, just to try and bring him round. Then she comes in, he's Mrs, Mrs Mustafa, and hits me over the head with a bog brush. Mustafa? You mean Mustafa the diabetic? <laughs> Well, I didn't know I was a sudden diabetic, you know, I was just trying to help the lives. I mean, diabetes, you just don't expect it, do you? Not with a Turk. <laughs> the DSS must have mentioned it in his report. I haven't got time to read reports. Man, I've got guests to look after. Why do these people wear badges? <laughs> badges? We're telling you what the problem is. <laughs> they would have no doubt, would we? Harry, don't take your theory too far, otherwise you'll find yourself walking around with a badge saying, I am a cerebrally challenged dickhead. <laughs> don't call me cerebrally! <laughs> what is that racket? It's cutting right through me. Harry's fixing the lift up on the third floor. Reminds me of my Sandra. Oh, what? All that banging? <laughs> no, we actually met in a lift. I lay in bed last night thinking about her. Uh, all the fun times we had in the past. Like the time, for no reason at all, we just said, let's do it. And off we went to the Black Country Tram Museum. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the good times, eh? <laughs> yeah. We went again the following year, but it just wasn't the same. Well, they do say never go back, don't they? And it's true. The toy boy, you know, the bodybuilder she's living with, has joined a troupe of male strippers called the Big Boys. Sandra goes along and watches all the shows. She pretends to get excited and screams a lot. But she's only doing it for him. I know her too well. All that muscle and baby all, it's just not her. Well, I take it you and her didn't go in for that sort of massage thing. No. <laughs> only if it involved Al Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss her, though. What's brought this on, Simon? Uncle Larry said today was his wedding anniversary. I just wondered what I could get him. Uh, you could try and find where his wife is. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what ever happened to Auntie Susan. All those years ago, she just suddenly disappeared off the face of the earth. Perhaps she found God and entered a convent. <laughs> Maybe she went off to a faraway island to contemplate her being. Personally, I think he murdered her. <laughs> Harry, why don't you just call on the lift engineers to get this working? Oh, oh. Have you seen the prices they charge? How many times have they been round here before? The lift still keeps jamming. They explained that to you. This thing is so antiquated, they're not so much giving it a service as the kiss of life. <laughs> you need a new lift, Harry. Well, they're bound to see that, aren't they? They're after a seal. How much do you think that's going to cost me? No, no, no. This is Victorian engineering at its finest. These lifts were made to last. So is long life milk. But after seven or eight months, you get rid of it. <laughs> Sudden ground floor, could it? Here's your tea. Sure. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you a question? What in God's name do you know about lift engineering? Oh, it's simple common sense. Another reason you shouldn't touch it. <laughs> Deborah, Deborah, the army taught us if it's broken, repair it. Your life depends on your own imagination and ingenuity. And you still survived. <laughs> Guests, Deborah. <clears throat> and can I ask you a question, Harry? Why did you call me all the way up here? I wanted you to see the lift in action. Hey, it's working really well now. Well, if it's working that well, why didn't you bring the bloody thing down to the ground floor and show me it working well there? <laughs> I wanted to give you a lift down in it. I knew you'd be knackered after climbing all them stairs. <laughs> Just you listen. What for? You won't hear a thing. What's the point in listening then? 
I mean, it's like a well-oiled machine. W well, it is a well-oiled machine. Watch. That would have cost me 50 quid if I'd called the service engineers in. Do it all myself. Every nut, bolt and screw has been personally greased and tightened by my own fair hands. Hang on, it is a nut here I've missed. <laughs> oh, bollocks! I'm afraid the lift's out of order. <laughs> Emergency services were today rushed to the Olympic Hotel in Smethwick after its lift plummeted four storeys to the hotel basement. The only occupant, hotel owner Harold Springer, was trapped inside the lift for two hours as firefighters fought to free him. Guests and members of staff looked on in concern as police and paramedics administered first aid and encouragement to the trapped man. <laughs> Other worried guests gathered outside as Mr Springer was rushed to Birmingham City Hospital, where he's now undergoing tests. You just got back from the hospital? How was he? Doctor said he was critical. Critical? I didn't realise he was that injured. No. He meant Uncle Harry kept moaning about the food and the service. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Harry's complaining about the food. That's like Phil Collins moaning about the sound of an electrical drill. Hey, talking of food, I haven't had anything to eat all evening. Well, one good thing about Harry being injured, we could send out for a takeaway. But first of all, let's clear this place up. We've got the insurance company and the left engineers coming tomorrow. I can't believe he's created all this mayhem. And all to save fifty pounds. Well, at the end of the day, it was a bit of false economy, wasn't it? Aye, uh, but he's a tight one. <laughs> I remember what he was like in the army. We were in a bar in Cyprus once. And he rolled a hand grenade across the floor. Just to get out of buying his round. Then there was another time we were stationed in Hong Kong. Dougie. And we had to buy this present for one of the boys who was getting married. <laughs> and Harry offers to bake the cake for him. And he proceeds to use ingredients from the cookhouse. Dougie. It was the first bulletproof wedding cake ever made. <laughs> they couldn't get a hammer drill in it, never mind a knife. Dougie, we're making a skeleton here. It was the first time I've ever seen pictures of the bride and groom holding a machete. <laughs> What's that, Simon? A skeleton? Look. <laughs> oh, God. I was buried under the floor. I know. I mean, it probably means nothing. <sighs> but. Hi. Oh, Harry. What have you done? <laughs> oh, God. I need a large brandy. Yeah, I could kill for an advocate. <laughs> you take this up to my room. I'll go and fix us both a drink. Don't let anyone look in that sack. Don't talk to anyone. Concentrate, Simon. Don't worry, Dougie. I'm focused. He's <laughs> <laughs> calling the list. <laughs> I think you may have something of a weight, Simon. I forgot. So, Lano, yeah. Uh, yeah. You got that? Uh, oh. Ah. Hello, Simon. Simon. Uh, oh! An unhappy guest? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Drugs is a dangerous thing, you know? Uh, no, 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 no. What, uh, what, what, what it is, is, um. Uh, Amateur dramatics! Uh, Yorick! I knew him. Can I do Show Roti advert yet, I like Loritelli. TV advert. Uh, <laughs> on me head, son! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what 
the hell are you doing? I was just checking to see if any bones missing. There will be in a minute. Your nose bone will be missing from your sodden face. That's my bed. Well, I didn't know what else to do. It's ironic, really, isn't it? That's the first woman you've had in this bed for ten years. Uh, turns out to be Harry's wife. Oh, dear Susan, don't be stupid. He thought the world of her. Ah, uh, he worshipped the ground she was buried under. I can't believe it. Do you think Auntie Susan's dead? <laughs> well, I'm no expert, Simon, but I think even George Clooney would give up on this bastard. No. What I'm trying to say is, do you think this is really Auntie Susan? I can't be certain. But if it is, she's changed somewhat since we last met. <laughs> Simon, consider the facts. Harry and Susan had a blazing row in the Torval and Dean Lounge. Susan then disappeared, never to be seen again. At the same time, Harry abandoned his plans to build a subterranean swimming pool in the cellar. The neighbours reported hearing a loud bang, and what did Harry bring back from the Falklands as a souvenir? An Argentinian pistol. But it could have been a complete accident. Oh, aye. Susan could have asked to look down the barrel and see how fast the bullet was coming out. Mother often said Uncle Harry had murdered her. But that was when she'd had a drink and was a bit giggly. <laughs> you wait here, Dubby. And keep an eye on her. I'll go down and phone the police. But you are, Simon. The police? Simon! Good evening, Mr. Strachan. Oh, God. <laughs> I wondered if you knew how Mr. Springer was. Fine, Mrs. M. Should be home tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise you had company. No worries. <laughs> you badger. Hi. Uh, yes, the Olympic Hotel. Simon, put the phone down. That's right, Bones. Oh, no. I got one caught in my throat, so this time can you make sure the chicken's filleted? I can two nan bread, please. Cancel the sudden curry. <laughs> Did you phone the police? No, I was just about to. Simon, come with me. <sighs> of all the bars in all the world, and you had to walk into this one. <laughs> Baker, there's a fat bloke just gone up to your room carrying a Maltese falcon. Is he? He's a bit early, isn't he? Yeah. He's looking at you, kid. <laughs> Simon, let's not be hasty. I mean, we based everything on assumption. Harry may well be an innocent man. That's why I'm going to let the police prove it. Grow up! He's as guilty as sin. <laughs> Even on the thought of Harry spending the rest of his life in the slammer fills me with joy. I still owe him. He saved my life, Simon. That night in the Falklands, he saved my life. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Harry. Bastard. <laughs> and what about you? He's your own flesh and blood. And when your Sandra threw you out of the house, who took you in? Uncle Harry. Aye. Gave you shelter, never asked for anything in return. You're right. Well, £70 a week. Ah, £70 a week? Well, it's not that bad, is it? Oh, no. And meals are included. Oh, well, in that case, was a wee bit pricey. But we both owe him. We owe him enough to hear his side of the story. Besides what I remember of Susan. If Harry hadn't done it, somebody else would. We phoned the hospital earlier, see how the gaffer was doing. Sister said that he had... Splintered collarbone. Uh, two fractured ribs. Broken arm. And multiple ruptures of the shoulder tendons. But it's not all good news. <laughs> we'll send him home tomorrow. Right. Well, good night to you. Aye. Yeah, well, we're just going to stay here and have a... Well, uh, Watch TV. Aye. <laughs> so that's what we'll do, Simon. We'll wait till tomorrow, hear what Harry has to say. Agreed? Agreed. Well, good night, Dougie. Sleep well. Aye, uh, good night, Sam. What do you mean? Sleep well? I've got Sodden Susan waiting in bed for me. <laughs> Couldn't you put her on the floor for now? Aye, I could, but I don't exactly relish the idea of spending the night in the honeymoon suite of the Trust House Dracula. <laughs> I'll stay in one of the other rooms for tonight. I'll be off. I want to catch the late night film. It's Jack Nicholson in The Shining. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Oh. 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 
So, how you feeling? How am I feeling? Look at me, I look like a superior old goalkeeper. Still, I normally make quick recoveries. I'm exhausted. I sent the doctor. I've got the body of a 35-year-old. Would have really buried that one. Bollocks! Here's a drug. Here's a drink. Oh, I'm trying to get the bug. <laughs> so what's been happening while I've been away? Not a lot. The lift engineers called, said they could repair the old motor for 1500 but couldn't guarantee its safety. They recommended a new one, and it'd only cost another thousand pounds. Oh, well, have the old one repaired? That's what I thought you'd say. I told them to go on with it. Uh, Miss Meredith phoned to say she'd call round... Uh this evening and have a look at your conference facilities. Good. And we found a human skeleton in your cellar. <laughs> we found a skeleton in the cellar. Eh? Anyone you know? <laughs> what? Just the one, like? Aye, just the one. Now, this is very difficult. What do you mean, just the one? How many you got down there? Oh, about 30. 30? <laughs> Listen, I've got something to confess you. I mean, I know what I did wasn't very nice, but it doesn't make me a bad person, does it? Oh, God, what did you do, Harry? I panicked. You see, I didn't realise when I bought this place, but this hotel was built over a 16th century plague pit. You know, a communal grave. I found out when I was excavating for my subterranean swimming pool. And you found 30 skeletons? Oh, they were lying all over the place. Me cellar looked like a Benetton advert. <laughs> Still kept the moles away. You found all those human remains and didn't say a word about it. What could I say to the guests? Oh, by the way, did I mention I've got a genuine circa 15th century bubonic plague pit in my cellar? <laughs> guests can be funny about a thing like that. So I just kept my mouth shut and I concreted it over. You think we're going to believe that? Well, if you don't believe me, you can go to the town hall. It's on all the old city maps. And will the town hall tell us what happened to Susan? Susan? Aye, your ex. Or should we say, late wife? Oh, it's a game, man, it's a game. You think I murdered Susan? Oh, we better get this sorted out before that lesbian from your office comes round. <laughs> Douglas, I'm an innocent man. We've only got your word for that, haven't we? And we may be accepting the word of a murderer. All this bollocks about the hotel being built in a bubonic plague pit is most probably a ruse to put us off the scent. I think you murdered Susan, put her in the cellar and collected on her insurance money. Hi, Susan. Evening, Diggy. <laughs> on the other hand, you could be completely innocent of all the charges. Oh, hell. So, where have you been keeping, Susan? I'm over me murder now. Oh, oh, oh. Don't get emotional. Oh, 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 no, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh. What are you doing here? Saw you on television last night. Thought I'd drop by to see you. So how are you, Harry? Oh, 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 oh. How am I? Well, I must admit I'm a tiny bit limp. <laughs> Nothing changes, does it? Be the bigger. Who does he think he is tonight? I ain't got a clue. I don't know what film they're showing today. <laughs> they seem to be getting along well. Yeah, let's give them a minute. So there was I, watching the news, and suddenly I see you all scrunched up in this lift, with firemen cutting you out. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> Just ignore us. So how's life been for you, Harry? Oh, champion pet. This place is like owning your own mint. The government don't know what to do with all the illegals and asylum seekers and mental patients, so they send them to me. And they pay me a fortune for the privilege. I haven't seen you for yonks. Why do you never get in touch? If you remember when you first bought this place, it was called the Hotel Splendido. After I left you, my solicitor did a check and said it had changed its name to the Olympic Hotel. So I just assumed you'd gone bust. 
You seen the type. I imagine you turn to drink with begging in the street and living in a cardboard box. So you can understand why I didn't want to contact you. Yeah, 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 fair enough. They were like Darby and Joan, those two. Still, you're back now, aren't you, Susan? I imagine you and Uncle Harry got a lot to discuss. Not really. Only how much my share of this hotel is worth. Come again, pet! <laughs> I legally own 50% of this hotel. But this is just a flea pit. I haven't made no money out of it. <laughs> no, no, unless it was like having your own mint. I mean, you know, a mint for lamb. <laughs> if I could afford lamb. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, I mean, since new Labour came to power, I mean, the bottom's fall, falling right out of the dosser industry. <laughs> I haven't got two years to rub together. I'll judge that for myself, Harold. I've booked a room here. I could be staying for quite a while. It's fate, Harry. Just think, if you hadn't come crashing down four storeys in that lift, I'd never have known you were still alive. But look on the bright side, Harry. You still save 50 quid from not asking the engineers to come in. <laughs> Harry, I think that woman from Simon's office has just pulled up. Oh, it's a game, man, it's a game! <laughs> 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 Miss Meredith, Harold Springer, lovely to meet you. And you too, Mr. Springer. I do hope I'm not inconveniencing you. Simon said you'd had a little accident, but I had no idea it was this serious. Oh, don't mention it, Pet. I'm ex army. Pain means nothing to me. <laughs> hey, let me show you around my hotel. This is uh, what I call the outside. <laughs> Did you call? Oh, just a bit disturbed. I remembered the skeleton. Thanks for moving it, Simon. What did you do? Put it back in the cellar? Me? I never touched it. <laughs> Simon, we were the only two who knew it was here. Well, if I didn't move it and you didn't move it, who did? <laughs> oh, God. Look what film they're showing today. Is it a listed building? Aye. On a couple of lists. Sorry, <laughs> Norman. You've always been bad. Oh no, it's blood. Oh, mother, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that, Mrs. Murder. It's just Baker. He's a nutter. <laughs> she was no good, Norman. She really brought to trouble. <laughs> oh, mother, there's blood, mother, there's blood. Perhaps I'll come back when you're better, Mr. Springer. You're not going to let the little thing out that I'll put you off, are you? I'll ring you sometime. Oh. Bollocks! <laughs> there are more shenanigans at Heartbreak Hotel here on BBC One at the same time next Friday night. The comedy continues tonight with Chewing the Fat in a moment. They came to fulfill a fall.